Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is part two of my bias binding ultimate guide. And if in case you missed it, part one was all about the different types of bias binding that you can get, the ready-made ones, and then also about actually making it yourself as well, if you wanted to do that. And then the second video is gonna be about how to actually apply it onto your garments. So at the necklines and at the armholes as well. So I'm going to show you different ways that you can do it and in the description bit of this video I've put the timings of when I actually show you the different ways so if there's just a specific way that you want to do it then you can skip to whatever time you want in the video um, but I'm going to talk you through them all now anyway. So the first thing that you need to decide really when you're thinking about putting your bias binding onto your garments is whether you want to see it or not so it can be visible on the outside of your garment when the garment's totally finished or it can be folded into the inside so exposed or concealed is the first sort of decision that you need to make and then one kind of overarching tip that I want to highlight that is really really important throughout all of the different methods that you can put it on is that you must press really well pressing with the iron and the iron board with a nice hot iron and that's got water in it so that you've got steam as well is really important and it makes a big difference to getting a, a really crisp finish on the garment so um, that is really important just generally throughout you've got to have a good good ironing setup. So the first two ways that I'm going to show you is if you want to have the binding exposed and then if you do want to have it exposed there's then another choice to make is whether you see the full width of the binding or you see half of it. So in the first video I was showing you that you can get different widths of bias binding. For dressmaking I personally prefer 18 millimetres wide um, of bias binding which is the distance between the two folds when it's when it's just folded once at either side. Um, it's that 18 millimetres, that's what I prefer to use. Um, and you want to decide whether you're going to see all of that or half of it. So the first way that I'll show you is the exposed with the half width and the two examples I've got of that are this one here which has got some tucks at the front of it and then also this one here. For the top with the tucks I decided that I wanted to make my own because folding that binding sort of back on itself and then having to top stitch over the tucks I didn't think that would look that great so I wanted the binding just to be on top of that and I wanted it to match the fabric, I didn't want a contrast. And then with this top here, which is sort of watercolour um, style of cotton, it's really nice design, you might find it's just hard to get a binding that really matches the fabric really well. So then it's nice to use your own one in that instance as well. So to do this technique and have it so that it is exposed but to half the width of your binding first of all you want to open out one of the folds on the binding and you line it up with the raw edge of your garment at the neckline and you want the right sides facing okay so then you're going to sew it to the main fabric and you just use the crease as a guide so that's your sort of stitching guide as you attach it onto the top the next step is to then press the binding all the way up and away from the garment but watch that you don't press out the crease on the other side, you still need that crease there. And then you want to turn the main fabric so that the wrong side of the fabric is facing up and press the binding over the raw edge and just past that stitch line so that you can't see it anymore. And then you want to top stitch the binding in place with the right side of the garment facing you as you stitch because then you can make sure that you get it looking really nice and even from the front of your garment even if there's a little bit of inconsistencies in how you've pressed it. So that is how you get your exposed binding and then if you wanted it to be the full width of the fabric showing and the example that I've got is on this top here so you can see that it's much wider than that. So the instructions for this top actually got you just to have a bias strip and then sort of fold as you go along, but you could use ready-made binding for this as well. Um, for this one, if you're using ready-made binding, you want to open out one of the folds of the binding and line it up with the raw edges of the garment at your neckline with the right side of the binding facing the wrong side of the main fabric. So then again, you sew it to the you sew it to the main body of the garment and you use that crease as your stitching guide. So then you press the binding all the way up and away from the main garment, ensuring that you don't press the crease out on the other side again, and then press the full width of the binding to the front of the garment all the way over 
and then just pin it in place and then you can sew close to that bottom fold just there. So yeah, that is the two differences there. You can see the full width of the binding or the half width. So the next two methods I'm going to show you are when the binding's hidden, it's concealed to the inside. And again, you can choose whether you want, you're going to see a stitching line with this one. So you can choose what distance you would want it away from the, the outer edge of your garment. So I usually do it so that there's half the width of the binding shown in the inside, but you could do it the full width as well. So it's like a reverse of the other one that I showed you. Um, but if you want to do it so that the stitching line is half the width of the binding, so that's what it looks like on this top here, so on the armholes of this top, um, the stitching line is, is half the width of the binding away from that, that outer edge and then the binding's on the inside. Um, what you're going to do is follow the same steps as you did for exposing it, so the same steps that I showed you for this method here. You just do it in exactly the same way, but instead of stopping when you get to this stage, you just fold it over again. So you wouldn't have done that stitch line yet. You just fold it over again, press it, and then stitch it down. And it's important to make sure that you're stitching it with the front of the garment facing you, because it means that you can get the stitching looking even, even if you still have a little bit of pressing and consistencies at the back. You know, it doesn't matter if it, the binding itself doesn't look totally even from the back. You can sort of cheat it by making sure that your top stitching is even from the front. So that's also a nice option to go for. And on this top, I've you know I've exposed it at the neckline, but I've hidden it at the armhole. So you can just depend, just decide whatever sort of look you want to go for. If you want to have the full width here, then you would just do the same as you did for showing it to the front but instead when you first put it onto the fabric you'd put the right side of the binding facing the right side of the main fabric and then you'd fold it all to the inside um, over the full width of it rather than folding it in half and then in half again and then again I would still recommend top stitching it from the front. So I don't actually have an example of that but it would just kind of be like what the reverse of this one looks like really and um, the inside of this this garment looks like here so you'd have your stitching line just further away from that outer folded edge of your garment so the last method that i'm going to show you is sewing it on a little bit like a mini facing really so for this method you have your bias strip and you don't need those folds that that come in ready-made bias binding so if you're using ready-made bias binding you can just press them out or obviously if you're making your own you just need to cut your bias strip and then you're going to fold it in half with the wrong sides together so that the raw edges are touching so you then have a strip and um, it's just like that and then you are going to line the raw edges of the binding so both of those raw edges stay together now and they are going to line up with the raw edges of the neckline of your garment on the the right side or the outside of your garment so you sew that strip onto the garment at whatever seam allowance you've is, is maybe recommended in the pattern or that you've built in when you've cut out your bias strip so you sew that on there and then sometimes patterns will tell you to understitch it which is what i've done on this um, blue and white stripey one here so once you've attach the binding itself onto the garment you then press the binding up and away from the neckline and then you understitch through the binding and the seam allowance is really close to the edge that just helps the binding to stay on the inside of the garment and then you press all of the binding up and over it should hide the raw edges on the inside so if they're sticking over a little bit then you can just trim them back and then press again and then top stitch from the front of the garment again just to make sure that the stitching looks even if there's very slight um, variations and the distances that you've pressed and sewn previously and um, so that's another way to do it as well so the other thing to consider with all of these methods is that if you're applying bias binding around the neckline or an armhole then you're going to have to deal with a join and the easiest way to do that I think is to do it at the stage after you've done that very first line of stitching to attach it on in the first place so before you do any pressing or folding or under stitching or anything like that you sew your binding on in whatever side that you're sewing on depending on the method that you're using and then you just leave a gap so you'd have a gap maybe about sort of two and a half three inches approximately where you've just not sewn it together and just make sure that you've got long tails 
um, that you can trim down to size. So once it's secured and actually sewn on, then you can just lay the edges of that binding flat, sort of work out where they're going to be butting up against each other. So you just lay them flat, line them up with the neckline, fold it back, and I usually try to make a crease with my nail so that I, it just sort of stays in position. So you do that on both sides, and then you just need to sew them together, press the seam allowances open, and then continue with whatever method you're doing. Um, I find this the, the easiest way to do it and if I'm doing it on an armhole I would always try to do the joint underneath the armpit just so that it's more likely to be hidden or if you're doing it in a neckline you can try to do it at the centre back or you can try to do it at, the, at a shoulder seam if you wanted as well, it's not really going to be that noticeable at all um, You know, if you have a look at, at that one here then my seam is actually sort of just over the back of the shoulder there but you can you know it's it's, it's barely visible really you know it's, it's going to blend in quite a bit I would just avoid sort of having it right there because it might just bug you it'll be one of those things that you see that nobody else sees and um, so yeah as long as it's the back somewhere then I think you'll be fine so I hope you find that useful in terms of um, working out how to put the binding on. The, the key thing really is the pressing and then also just taking it easy and when you come to actually do the sewing, just going nice and slow and trying to, to get the, the lines of stitching as even as you can and kind of finding a reference point for that. So whether it's a, it's a seam line like top stitching on here or whether it's lining it up to, to this edge here and just using the foot of your machine to do that. Um, as, as, as I was saying quite a few times throughout, even if there's slight inconsistencies in how you've pressed it, you can quite often sort of cheat it and make it look even from the front, which is which is the main thing really. Um, so if anybody's got any questions, of course, just leave me a comment below. I'll also link to a blog post as well, which is where I'll just have some more pictures and some some summary of the instructions too. Um, so thanks for watching guys, please stay tuned. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the video to the channel yet then hit subscribe i've got a new fabrics video coming out next week and we've got loads of really beautiful stuff so i look forward to sharing all of them with you and i hope you have a lovely week and i'll see you then thanks guys bye